make silly putty. If you want to find out how to make silly putty, this is a good place to start. Silly putty is created by the chemical reaction that occurs when certain ingredients are mixed together. It was a failed attempt by GE and Dow Corning to make synthetic rubber that gave us silly putty. The material from the experiment didn't work out as a replacement for rubber because it wasn't hard or strong enough. However, a copywriter, Peter Hogston, saw its potential as a toy and bought the production rights from GE. He named it Silly Putty, marketed it, and the rest, as they say, is history. What makes Silly Putty wonderful is its adaptability to a wide range of applications as educational and entertainment material. Boys and girls of all ages like it, and it's fairly cheap. It can be manipulated to teach abstract concepts like numbers, shapes, letters, etc. It can keep young hands and minds that would otherwise run wild, quiet, and busy. Playing and learning with it engages many learning processes at the same time. Now we'll review the process of making Silly Putty. The material produced by this process is not exactly like commercial Silly Putty, which uses different chemicals and is copyrighted, but it is good enough for home use, will keep for some time, and you can always make a new batch. 1. Gather the things you will need. This makes a large batch. An 8-ounce bottle of ordinary white school glue. Water. 1 teaspoon of borax mixed in 1 half cup of water. Food color, if you want colored Silly Putty. Without food color, your putty will be off-white. A container for mixing, plus a few smaller containers for each color of Silly Putty you want to make. A Ziploc bag, optional. 2. Pour the school glue into a non-porous container that is not used for food. The container should be big enough to accommodate all the ingredients. 3. Fill the glue bottle with water of the same amount as the glue. Shake it, then pour it into the container. Mix together both the glue and the water. 4. Add a few drops of color to the mixture and mix so that the color is distributed well. If you want to make several colors, divide the mixture according to the number of colors you want and place in separate containers. Be warned, however, that dividing the borax by color can be quite a pain. 5. Add the borax into the mixture. If you have several colors, you will need to divide the borax by the number of colors you have and add separately. Quite a pain, as mentioned previously. 6. Mix and squish together. To make it easier, you can put the mixture into separate Ziploc bags and squish and knead to incorporate all the ingredients well. At this point, you can engage the help of your small helpers. They can start having fun with it. 7. When it starts to solidify, you can blot up the excess moisture with a paper towel or start using it. Exposure to air will eventually dry up the putty and make it more like the stuff we're used to. The silly putty will get more rubbery the longer you use it. You can also put some into a rubber balloon, tie off the opening, and use it as a stress ball to roll and squeeze with your hand. Given its huge commercial success, Silly Putty is not so silly. Now that you know how to make Silly Putty, you don't have to spend money on it. That would just be silly.